this is in the, I start saying old, but it's not very old, a Hinkle's paring knife. Um, it's not the, the, I think they were French or German made, I believe German. Um, this is the international variety. And what I'm going to do, most of you know that I use a sheep's foot blade on one of my pocket knives as a marking knife. But I want to turn this into a dedicated marking knife. This is a, something I saw from Paul Sellers. Uh, so I want to give credit there immediately. But all I'm going to do... I don't want it too short because I want to be able to reach into thicker stock to mark dovetails. So, but I want to, you see how this is all pretty straight until you get about here and then it begins to curve. Well, I want to, I want to keep that straight edge as well as I can. And I'm going to turn it into basically a sheep's foot blade. Now this, I'm going to use a little Dremel wheel and this Dremel, I've used these little wheels on um, saw plates and stuff like that. They do not generate enough heat to mess with the temper of this blade. So I'm just going to It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna kind of pull it off a little because that is getting a little warm. Not very warm, but I'm gonna preserve. I'm going to preserve the temper of this metal. You saw that it got a bit warm, and I went ahead and used a uh, a bit of water. But these are you can buy these that you can buy these, and they range from very cheap to very expensive. You can also buy kits for these with really exotic um, wood handles and things of that nature if you want to. Actually, let me bring that a little further in so that I can tighten up on it a bit more. I really need to find a way to uh, put uh, put a uh, some leather or something inside this vise. 
you can't see what I'm doing. Okay. All right, uh, I don't know how much you missed. I will do some creative editing. Um, so we've got this cut off. I could leave it like that. That don't look bad at all. But I'm going to try to round that. I really would love to be able to find a way to put some leather in here with some kind of material so that this would grab more. But it, it came that way and out here in the elements, it just fell off. The adhesive that was used would not hold it. That kind of thing. So, yeah. So I have to crank this vise a lot more. To hold. To make it hold. Oh, by the way, you see how I'm sharpening or I'm shaping away from this point and away from this edge. And I've got this forearm resting here. Everything is locked. I don't want anything slipping into that point. This, that might not be, this might not be a perfectly Uh, effective way to to do that but you should do everything that you can think of okay to mitigate that all right I have a 400 water stone if you look I pretty much got the basic shape there is a little nick there from the grinder or, or the cutter don't care And I'm going to take this and kind of try to smooth out. Let me go over here to this edge. Any tool marks along that spine. This step is not necessary, but if I'm going to make one, I just as well do my best. Work. doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but I want it to be I want everything to look nice and smooth and all of that. All right. All right. That is razor sharp. What I did, I sharpened it on the same diamond stones that I shaped it on and went to a chromium oxide pasted strop to bring up a fine polish. And so now, That works really well. It's a nice razor sharp blade that will serve as a marking knife and do everything that I need it to do. Thanks for watching.